What's going on YouTube? It's Marvin and I'm back again. Happier, as you may notice, because you know we're, we're allowed out. I'm allowed out. Hopefully the rest of the UK will follow soon. I am back to work anyway. Whilst I have the green light to go and shoot, I'm gonna take you guys along with me just to show you how I would usually shoot go into these events i mean i will add in a few more things just to maybe help some people who haven't done this before on their first journey but the majority of the time i generally shoot like this so today i'll be changing my bag layout as i said the last few videos ago i've got the peak design strap just here which i can just pop that on and it can sit right there so i've got this on my a6400 too so when i'm not using one i'll just switch out the other and put it on my hip i'm going to be shooting for almost two and a half hours definitely taking the battery grip what i want to do is be able to leave the camera on and not have to worry about switching it off to save battery <laughs> part of taking photos for uh, the ipswich basketball team something that i think is very important is the ability to upload so especially now more than ever during times like this where you can't have many fans in the stands there are some people who will be watching online so with with the a7r4 what i will be doing is setting up the ftp ftp stands for file transfer protocol i always forget this what that will allow me to do is basically whilst i'm shooting i can select which photos i want to quickly transfer to my phone and then from there i will then upload them to twitter which is where this club gets most of its social media action now my old common way of doing so i would just connect my phone straight to my camera but then what you'll get is almost like a tether and with tethering to mobile devices you don't get the full resolution images now that's not necessarily a bad thing as it saves space however there's not much detail, there's not much colour to, to the photos, especially if you're shooting raw. Now my plans are to always get to the club early, that way I can always prepare and be ready for everything that might pop up. In this case, as I haven't used the internet before, I'm going to have to do that. So with FTP, you will need some form of router, something to transfer a the connection. If that doesn't work, then I'll just have to resort to the old way. Now that I've got everything ready, I think it's a good idea that I just get to location and everything that I do to set up, I'll show you through the GoPro. So much for being early. One's when they start getting ready. I was supposed to be there at like half past 12. Upon entry, we're still required to follow the COVID-19 preventative rules. Before we get started, forgive me if the order of everything and my setup is all jumbled. I must say that I was pleasantly distracted by people who I hadn't seen for quite some time. But please take in as much information as you need to and basically just figure out your own process and what works best for you. As soon as I get into the gym, you want to be able to take out all of the things that you will be restricted with time. Anything that requires other people, make sure that you aim to tick. Things like taking social media tags from the opposing team and FTP settings. If you're new to FTP in, I won't be around the bush. FTP in for me was a nightmare. Connecting to the gym's Wi-Fi was non-existent. It didn't work. I then tried to tether off of members of the team and I still had issues. If I knew I would have had those issues earlier, then I would have brought my iPod as a secondary workhorse to make sure everything would flow. If you don't know how to set up FTP, then check out my video clicking the eye at the top right of the screen. Make sure you open up a notes app where you keep all of the social media tags ready to be copied and pasted into a Twitter or an Instagram feed. However, whatever social media you're using. That way, after you tether or FTP the photos to your phone or device, you can caption, paste and upload your photo all in one. Because I ran out of time trying to set up my FTP, I didn't get the pre-game shots that I would usually get or take the time to. What I'm trying to say is don't be like me, get there earlier, make sure that you're all set and go from there. Important steps for setting up your camera. Let's start with shutter speed. In my opinion, I will not shoot less than 1 640th of a second if I'm trying to keep my subject somewhat still. Anything less than that, for me, will introduce too much motion. That's where I found my happy place. Now to save yourself editing time, I would make sure that your ISO stays constant. Sometimes it is nice to have it on auto to expose it correctly. However, because of the volume of photos that you are taking, you're more than likely going to use a preset on the majority of them all. If they are not somewhat all equal in light, then you're going to have to do more work. Because of the lighting in most sports facilities, if you can use a prime lens, which will have a low aperture like a 1.8, a 1.4, a 1.2, then I would say go for that. 
I'm lucky enough to have a full frame camera where I don't have to worry about the light as much as what I did with my crop sensor. I still have to be quite careful because I have a 61 megapixel camera, which will introduce noise a lot more prominently than your traditional 24 megapixel camera. I set my settings to continuous autofocusing on a flexible spot. Basically, what that means is if I lock on my focus, the camera will hold on to that point even if the subject is moving forwards or backwards, making sure that I do not lose my focus and I get tack eye sharp photos. If you have another system, you'll have to research what is the most comparable to Servio AI or continuous autofocus. Last but not least, try not to use auto white balancing. This will make your editing process a lot longer than it needs to be. How you do that is just by going into your white balancing settings, you'll have a setting where you can change the custom white balance. As you'll see on screen, I've got a gray card, which I will point up to the light. And as you set the white balance, it will take a photo and balance it. That way, once you're in the same space, you won't have to balance the light again. If you are shooting sports outside, then this is something that you may have to change depending on how harsh the sunlight is. Now, getting into the shooting side, the fun side. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using a zoom lens. With the zoom lens, I'm not gonna have the same amount of light let in like a prime. However, this helps me move around the court and frame my photos the way that I want to, instead of using a prime that then bounds me by the sidelines. And that's why I've chosen to use a zoom. On the flip side, I do have a prime on my other body. Predominantly, I'll use it for wider shots in, in huddles or under the rim or something of that nature. So in my style, when it comes to shooting basketball photos, I always like to shoot lower than the player. It's very rare that I do that simply because I forget and I end up standing up, which isn't good for photos, but <laughs> predominantly good for my legs. When I do get it right, the reason why I crouch down lower is this makes the player look bigger. It makes the player look more dominant and it definitely gives them almost like a godlike position. So when the player's back reviewing these photos or, or fans or whoever's viewing the photos, they get somewhat of a presence. Like that person is there. That person is really kind of making a move. So that's, that's just the way that I think about it. Framing is equally important. In my opinion, make sure that there is space in the direction of the player's trajectory or eyesight. So what I mean by this is if a player is on the left side of the frame and they are facing towards the right, make sure that there is just that space, that open space. Or if they're driving to the rim, then you kind of know that they're going for that rim without the rim necessarily being in, in frame. I feel like if I don't get these things, then the photos always look weird or, or unnatural. I personally like to take portrait images as well, unless it's on the defensive side and you're really trying to show the width of the court and kind of defensive continuity. Catching action and emotion is is lucky at times. As a photographer, it's, it's definitely what I wanna see. However, uh, faces can be made and it's important to at least have a balance of stagnant shots um, mixed with some action. Now, although I would love the documentary side of the photos, how it really went down with all the ugly faces and the <laughs> all the stuff that comes in between, as I mentioned, I want the players to be proud of themselves too. And a lot of the time that comes with them standing, maybe waiting for the play to start or engaged, but thinking about the next play. Those are the shots that really kind of stand out for, for that person. It's like a portrait, but just in the middle of a very intense game. Anyway, you get the point. What I'm trying to say is get a mixture, get balance. My final piece of advice this advice was actually given to me and I've added it into my mix and my thought process. One of the key points that I took from the conversation is when I'm making all of my selects, make sure that the ball is in shot, but most, most, most importantly, make sure that no limbs are missing. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with composing your shot where you are aiming for, you know, like a top body shot. Just make sure that you're not cropping it at the knee point or at the ankle point because it just looks unnatural. The eye of the viewer will still be looking for the rest of the shot. So make sure you are kind of clipping somewhere in the middle of the rib cage and the hips or the hips and the knee somewhere around that thigh mark just so that the shots look more intentional i'm lucky because i have such a high megapixel camera i can afford to crop in so what i'll end up doing more than likely is shooting a little bit wider to allow for 
uh, erratic movements and then crop in accordingly in post because I have the power to do so. Having a wider frame also allows for hands and stuff like that that goes out of frame to be recaptured or to, to be captured. There's nothing worse than getting a sick shot and you notice that like a finger's coming out of the shot. I think I actually got one. <laughs> I put it on screen now. I'm not to say that my shot was sick, but it was, a, it was a decent shot and it would have been nicer if I could keep the finger in frame. I hope my rules have helped you. At the end of the day, photography is all subjective and you'll break some rules and you, you just might like them. My thought process is that if you aim for the best, then generally you, you'll be happy with your final results. If I've missed anything or if you have anything to add to the list of sports or basketball photography, I very much appreciate you letting me know what your thought process is, what you would make sure is checked off of your list before, during and after your creative process. If you're new to this channel, make sure you consider subscribing. Tap the like button if you like this content and I'll see you in my next upload. Peace.